If you are familiar with financial investment, you definitely hear Treasury Inflation Protected Securities, which are designed to help people against inflation. Can you believe it? In the Song Dynasty, the government issued similar financial product, even though the goal of the government wasn't protecting the people's investment. In ancient China, common people had very heavy burdens. They not only must pay different kinds of taxes, but also must do yao yi, kuo which is a form of unpaid forced labor. In a family, once the husband did a kuo for the government, the wife may hardly make a life. For the whole family, so lots of families were destroyed. Buddhism first appeared in ancient China in the late Western Han Dynasty, and didn't be widely accepted. But during the Wei, Qin, and the Northern and the Southern Dynasties, wars frequently happened. Buddhism's principles. Like the cycle of rebirth, all things being equal, and action which is driven by intention leads to future consequences, etc., comforted the people who were suffering wars. So, from the emperor to common people, quickly accepted Buddhism. The Sui and the Tang dynasties were Buddhism's golden age. In most time of ancient China, Buddhism monks and nuns needn't pay taxes and do kori, but this rule only applied to the monks and nuns who had formal IDs. In ancient time, this ID was called du die. Now we don't know when du die first appeared. Considering in the northern and the southern dynasties, the government required all monks and nuns to register with the government. We believed Du Die highly possibly appeared in this period. Anyway, in the Tang Dynasty, Du Die definitely was fully developed. Du Die was used by all future governments. To control the monks and the nuns, until 1774, the 39th year of Qianlong's time. Generally, some basic information about the monks and the nuns, like name, age, temple, etc., was written on the Du Die. The monks and the nuns must carry Du Die with them. When they visited different places, originally, the government used Du Die to control the number of monks and nuns. So at the beginning, Du Die was given to qualified monks and nuns for free. But because the Du Die holder had the right to be exempted from taxes and kori. When the government needed money, they could sell blank du die to earn money, and yes, that was what the Song government did. The Song government wasn't the only government selling blank du die, but only in the Song dynasty, the blank du die was used as a financial tool by the central government. In the early Northern Song Dynasty, once the people passed the Buddhism examination, they could become monks or nuns and get Du Die for free. At that time, there were about four hundred thousand monks and nuns in the whole country. In the middle of the Northern Song Dynasty, the government started to largely sell blank Du Die. Last guys. 
the number of the monks and the nuns increased or decreased? The answer is the number of monks and the nuns decreased to two hundred thousand, and this number kept until the late Southern Song Dynasty. This means most people brought Du De not because they wanted to be a monk or nun. They brought Du De as an investment. From the government side, in Emperor Shenzhong's time, only about two percent government income was from selling Du De. But in the late Southern Song Dynasty. This number increased to sixty percent. In the Song Dynasty, Du De worked as a perpetual bond combined with an inflation-protected bond. Perpetual bond didn't have a maturity date, and the investors get a return through coupon payment. Similar, the Song government didn't buy back Du De. The buyers get a return through taxes and corporate exemptions. Du De didn't expire. In the long run, Du De's issue price continually increased. In 1070, one Du De was sold at 120 guan. In 1084, the price increased. To one hundred thirty guan. In eleven zero one, one Du De was sold at two hundred twenty guan. In eleven sixty one, the price increased to five hundred guan, and in eleven ninety two, one Du De was sold at eight hundred guan. From ten seventy to eleven ninety two. The issue price of Du De increased six point seven times. During the same period, the price of clothes increased from one point three guan to three guan, which was two point three times. The grain's price increased from zero point seven guan to three point three guan. Which was four point seven times. Now the U.S. Treasury securities were considered as risk-free securities. Unfortunately, Song Treasury Du De wasn't risk-free. As today's security market, which has a primary market and a secondary market. In the Song Dynasty, the government allowed the people to freely trade Du De, which created Du De's secondary market. During 1078 to 1085, the government issued Du De at 130 guan. Quickly, the price in the secondary market increased to 300 guan. Unfortunately, this time the government issued too much. Following supply and demand, Du De's price decreased to ninety guan. The government thought this price was too low, and banned people to trade Du De in the secondary market for three years. Meanwhile, the government decided. To destroy a part of Du De sold in the capital, as in today's market, when a large amount of investors sell their securities at the same time, the price of the security would significantly decrease. Du De's price decreased as low as twenty guan. Later, after the adjustment. The final price in the second secondary market increased to one hundred guan. By the way, Song was the first country to use paper currency. In the late Southern Song Dynasty, 
the gar the country was suffering from very high inflation and high debt. In my opinion, Mongolian armies only accelerated soon ending. Thank you for watching this video. See you soon.